one more time. Three, two, one. Dope. Welcome back, Organized Sound Podcast. I'm your host, Mahim Balde. I'm joined today by Mills. Mills. Talk money game. We're seven three out now. You all that? Come on, man. <laughs> Appreciate you for coming by. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna talk about Brooklyn rap. Um, obviously, you guys have been out in LA quite a bit, but I want to talk first of all about. Okay, yeah. So I don't know that we uh, established that uh, Mills is Jay Critch's manager. Jay Critch obviously recently signed two three hundred through Rich Forever. Um, no, nah, he didn't sign a Rich he didn't sign a 300, he just signed a Rich Forever Music. Okay, Rich Forever Music. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. So, um, tell me about coming up in Brooklyn and kind of clicking up for Talk Money and how that all went down. Right, so, Talk Money Gang, <coughs> it's about probably, I don't even know, probably eight, nine of us. I mean, Talk Money Gang basically team me, Talk Money Entertainment, that's us. Uh-huh. So... Basically, that's us growing up together, us in the studio and like us helping him with the videos, music wise, being around, being there for him. That's Talk Money Games, the supporting cats, everybody work together. And so, you know, and all the other extras, and all the extras. So, okay. both music wise, I mean, and Beverly Street wise, I mean, Talk Money Game, Talk Money Entertainment, that's us. So. Okay, so yeah, it goes it goes beyond music. You yeah, guys of course, are always, for real. It's, it's not even before the music. It's before, before the music, music. talk money. I mean, talk money is before the music. Now it's just for real now because you know it is it is what it is now. Yo, so now so, we made it official. Tell me about um, coming up in Brooklyn and like the musical influences that you guys had. Coming up in Brooklyn. Like for me personally, I was more of a Gucci man, OJ the Juice man. I feel mm. like. For me, Critch, Justo, Al, Sosa, they go, they love Sosa. Chief Keith. So yeah, that's that's kind of where our influences came from. And if you look at how we move, we kind of like move in a Chief Keith, Sosa, Glow Gang type of way because I mean, it's all it's all about us. It's just it's a game thing. We only, we always had each other. So when it comes to that, our influences, Chief Keith. I mean, for me, OJ the Juice Man, Gucci, with Gucci from Earth, Chief Keith in a way. So, right. It all tie in. So those are our influences. We don't really have no Brooklyn music as far as like influences wide because it's like it's a new we we stepped out of our lane and we did something different. So it's hard to have a, another New Yorker influence on when we create a whole new wave in New York. Well, Definitely. That's just what it is for us. So okay. as far as influence wise. Um yeah. so definitely it's a new wave. Can mm-hmm. you tell me about do you guys mess with any of the other people that are like and, coming up in the same kind of Camp and category for New York, like young people. If they out there, tell them to come holler. Tell them to come holler. <laughs> ready to work? Yeah, me and Bougie. Rich right? Forever 3 out now? Yeah, Price is going up. But. Yeah, come on. Price is going to see. Come on, holler. Boom, just showed out. Sold out the other day. So that was lit. Okay, yeah. let's jump right into that. Yeah, that was boy. crazy. Because so when I first seen you guys, there was there was a show um, so big, at right? like church. Well, that yeah, was the I first time I met you. Yeah. But there was a there was a show on Church Street even before that, and it was just Jay Critch. Oh. And that was turned up, and he had the the cult following. But High yeah. Ballroom, yeah, I've, been seeing, I've been seeing the highlights of that on Twitter. I've been posting them crazy. I can't. I still can't believe it. Highline Ballroom sold out like. 700, 700 people was there. Yo, Highline Ballroom, stupid. Couldn't believe it. Turnout was crazy. Crazy. Turnout was stupid. Was yeah. We, we would have been there. We, we booked a, a studio session that we couldn't duck out of. But nah, that, next time, there. next time, bro. Come on, this be, summer, it's gonna I, be know, you I know, know you guys are on the road. road. We'll, we'll get into that, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, talking about, you know, for, first signing the deal. Um, yeah. What what was that what was that link up in relationship? I'm assuming through Rich the Kid. Yeah, um, actually through Grams. Grams is Rich the Kid's like family. So mm-hmm. Grams heard the music over in Red Hook. So we spread it to um, Rich. Rich heard it. Uh, I was in DSU in his college, and I got the text from Chris like, "Yo, Rich, bumping the music, bumping the music." He sent me the video on Rich is dancing to the music. I'm like, "Ah, right, that's cool. Like, that's where it's gonna start." Next thing you know, I get a screenshot of a text message saying, yo, come to LA. I'm like, oh, so Chris, I mean, that day, fly out LA. I mean, they get in the booth, they remix, did it again. Next day, LA, they shooting a video, did it again. And that's when I know, 
Rich out here, we finish up the video, video drop, and just take off from there. That's so, sweet. Yeah, since November. <laughs> so it's been, what, seven months, I believe? Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was quick. But talk about, so talk about LA, kind of compared to New York. You guys have been out there in uh, mixtape mode. Yeah. Uh, right. Mixtape's coming soon, right? Your favorite? Your favorite? Do we have a soon. date on that? No, nah, no date. Do we have an exclusive no on that? Yet. No date. Bro. No date. All right, all right. No um, but, but yeah. It's coming soon. It's definitely coming soon. We so, sure. would you say you guys are now based in LA, or is that kind of an extended visit? We're working on being based in LA. Uh -huh. We're working on being based. We're gonna be based in LA probably by the end of the summer. But right now we back and forth. So New York, LA, come holler us. Either way, solid. We back and forth all the time. About to go back to LA <clears throat> next week, I think. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned moving out of um or or getting the call at college. Did you officially yeah. drop out? Yeah. As of all that yeah. going on. Yeah, definitely. What year were you over there? I was a um, sophomore. Doing what? Studying what? Accounting, and then I switched over to mar well, I, I forgot what I switched my major to. Say marketing. Right. I'm a marketing it's major. Funny. Just say marketing. Yeah, it's funny because I was I was studying accounting, and then I switched right before I got like I dropped out. I switched my major. I was in the process of switching my major to something more like entertainment, while like entertainment industry. Yeah. So. Like it was just crazy. Like I was just like I was tired of accounting, but I was just like it's time for me to for me to do something that I really want to do. And then that happened. I already changed my major. I was like, man, it's over. I'm, I'm gonna come back to this. It's time. You gotta right. Play. You gotta go for it. Yeah. When, it when the door opens, it was and I mean, you don't always get a signal that's so clear, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And okay, you were talking about the SOB shows when we first linked yeah, up. Yeah, SOB was You pulled up in the gold Maserati. Yeah, we had the gold Maserati. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> rolling through. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Then the other thing we we're talking about was dinner with Gary V. Yeah. Talk about talk yeah. about the business minds, the the cloth talk. So that dinner with Gary V was actually pretty early, like while everything was still going on. Mm. So I think that was like a little bit after they did it and getting that drop. So it was still fresh. And um, Gary V invited us to dinner. We went to dinner. It was a great meetup. He's talking to Richard Kidd about how to market himself and how he how Gary V came up. And Gary V came up like really hustling, grinding, grinding. especially. Like, he's, really, he's really a grind. Like he's one of those people that you wouldn't even expect. Like he just only you know how to make a thousand turn into five, five turn into twenty, twenty turn into a mil. Like literally. So Gary V sitting with him and really talking to him. I always tell people like I felt like I learned more at that table that night than I probably learned in a whole year of college. Damn. Yeah, he know what he's talking about like that. That's why I respect him. I respect him a lot. And a lot Damn. Of I, I got a lot of respect for him. I follow his content quite a lot. Mm -hmm. He makes a lot of smart investments. Yeah, he and that's that's when you turn like the millions into hundreds of millions and the hundreds of millions into billions of yeah. investments. And yeah. that's that's how the executive He do. told me he told me he was interested in buying the jets. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he about to buy the no, jets. That's a big that's he a told, big thing on his list. He told me he wanted to buy double XL too. Oh, I think, he, I think he was joking. He, no, he's on, <laughs> he's on the rap wave, though. Like, yeah, he is. He he loves rich. He understands he that rap dictates culture. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, he's got four sides. Yeah, honestly, he's, 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 he's going. Rap is going to take over the culture. You're going to see Gary, people like right. Migos, Rich Kid, Drake, all these big names. They're going to start taking over and start stepping around their boundaries, start doing a little different dabbing and different things. Even now that you start to see rappers model more, like I was gonna bring up fashion. Yeah, like, how do you, you feel about fashion right now? Yeah, we fashion. Killers. And what, what are you into? All of the design. high end brands or streetwear. I'm gonna keep it hundred. You can mix the streetwear with the designer. You see me, right. you, you'll see me. That's sometimes. the best way to do it. Yeah, I'll wear something like that. These local the brands that be making together. Like, honestly, you can't. That be one of one. So when I throw it on, I know for a fact that nobody. Is rocking it. Yeah, nobody and that's powerful that. too. And I got a good taste. Right. I believe in my taste. Me, Chris, all of us. That's like that's probably why we so close because we share things in common. Like we all know how to dress. And like if I'm lacking, Chris gonna tell me, like, "Yo, boy, what you got on? <laughs> what are you like, like? What's wrong with you?" Like, I mean, if he trip, I'm gonna be like, "Yo, nah, that's not it." I mean, go, nah, that's not it. So we all know how to throw lays together. We know how to really, really dress. So. I can't even give you like a list of name brands right now. Probably Fendi going stupid though. Fendi, Fendi is going crazy. Fendi going stupid. Um, it's Fashion Week in I feel like Paris right now. I've been seeing a lot of that type of stuff on yeah. my Instagram. Yeah. Um. Fendi so 
to keep talking about early days, a little while ago we were talking about Yams Day mm-hmm. and, and that whole situation. Yeah. Chris came out. Tell us about it was kind of unorganized from what you're it saying. It was really unorganized. Outside, standing in the cold for an hour, me or even Chris was outside in the cold for like you know, an hour before he got in. We telling him that now he's performing, he's performing. The list all messed up. Like it's all type of artists waiting outside, like I said, for me. Playboy, Hillary, just a couple of dudes waiting outside, but they got in and every, everything. Chris got in, you know, when Chris got in, he did his thing. We were still waiting outside thinking we was going to get in. Chris came back out like, yeah, I killed it, boom, boom, boom. We just went back to the crib. <laughs> <laughs> in and out. <laughs> in and out for real. <laughs> like the single. Yeah. Check out the single. In yeah. and out. In and out. Go cop, you know what I mean? Whatever three out now, too. I'm going to keep saying that. Occasionally. You got to. I got to. Plug it. Yeah, he's in this LA working spot. hard on that. He's in LA working hard on Rich Forever 3, bro. So, you know, I'm, proud, I'm proud of all of them. Dex, shout out Rich the Kid, CEO way. Really. Critch, of course. They all do their thing on that. I kind of want to talk about, you know, the new wave, Rich Forever mm-hmm. 3. I was listening to half of that. I was just on the bike when you FaceTimed me. I was just on my bike listening to it. Um, tell me about you know that work ethic because it's kind of a new way that artists put out music right yeah. now it's a lot it's quick mm-hmm. it's do the video mm-hmm. put out the next day keep keep moving keep flooding so like rich dex critch work ethic phenomenal out of this world out of this world like we in la i know we locked in the school 24 hours <clears throat> I remember all day. Yeah, like no sun. Like literally, we did a whole twenty four hours. I think one time I left. I went home one time. They did like a whole twenty six, twenty eight hours. Like I think they clocked in at like eleven a.m. They at least like three p.m. the next day. Like I think I went home like probably like six, seven in the morning. Mm. But for me, I woke up and I still, I, I still went back. Like that's how long they was in there. Like I probably and they were still there. Yeah, like I went like home right where you left them. Yeah, so. Their work, I think, is crazy. They're probably knocking out with those long sessions. We's probably knocking out like five, six songs a day. Like, and then Dex was back and forth. But when Dex came, really came out in LA, it was time for him to work. He was the one like, let's go to the stoop. Like Dex's energy, is yeah, crazy. leading the troop. We no. in the crib, and yeah. it's time to go to the stoop. It's time, like, it's time. Let's go, everybody, get up. Let's go. We got to the stoop. We in the stoop that whole night, that whole, whole night, like nonstop. So, Rich Rabbit 3 was like, probably like, one, I don't even know, like, one percent of what they did. One <laughs> percent? Yeah. So, there's music in the tank. The well, ball. there's gotta be, right? Because yeah. pretty much everyone's dropping a mixtape off of this. Yeah, so, the vault is crazy. For them, the vault is crazy. Even Chris, the hook fade the mixtape, the vault is crazy. We gotta cut the track list. So. Mm. But, when that, when that drop, it's time. It's so crazy. it's pretty much done. Everything's recorded at this say, point. I'm not gonna say it's sneak. done because we still making heat. He in the studio right now. Right. So it, he can make something right now, and that can go on the tape tomorrow. Okay. So that's how it works. That's how that's how they make music. So they I just keep you. making music nonstop. Anything can go on the tape. Anything at any point. I got you. What? Tell me about touring. Um, obviously, you guys are probably going to gear up for a tour yeah. when, tour up too, when another tour the up. time is right. But you've kind of been doing club shows and appearances and stuff like that. Yeah, right now, How do you like being on the road? You, you just had a run. I saw you in Miami. Yeah, we just did a little mini tour too. So I think when we first met, we was on the we was on the, um, Rich Travel Tour. Yeah. That was the Rich Travel Tour we was on. That was Rich Kid. That was when Chris first got signed. So that was introducing him. He was opening up for Rich Kid and everything. That really built his name and everything. That was to build his name. So now, we got a basis on how we want to do things, how we want to move, and where our parents is going to be. We got a lot of love in New York. Um, Cali, of course, is messing with us heavy. Uh, Florida, after this little run, we got Florida unlocked. So the goal is to just get touch everywhere so everybody hear us. So when we're working on another tour right now, the new wave tour yeah. with Dex and Rich, and might do a little hood fame tour on the side as well. Okay. Just when we so no, so people know who we are. Are you interested to go overseas? Yeah, when the time right. Sneak. Where, where would you want to go personally? UK like first. UK. Yeah, we got a lot of UK love. Okay. Shout out to the UK. So. Shout out to the UK. Yeah, we got a lot of UK love. Shout out. To them. All right, I want to talk more about um, 
management oh, and yeah. so of course you're, you're, you're young in the game but <laughs> really, yeah. I, I mean you learn as you go too with yeah, this type of stuff definitely what what are some of the big big lessons you learned or any stories you got from that really just make sure like everything is how you really want it to be like i'll be feeling like sometimes managers got a lot of power like well how you learn it up is how it's supposed to go so you gotta be sure to put your foot down you gotta be especially for me being young People I'm talking to like thirty, right? They banned. Like, so they don't really want to hear that from me. But I gotta put my foot down because I gotta make sure my artist safe. I gotta make sure my artist, you know, it's everything is good. The music is the way it's coming out, how it's supposed to be. You know, nobody's leaking it. So that's my job to stay on top of everything. So as long as you stay on top of everything and you don't, I mean, try not to miss so much because ain't nobody perfect. So you just gotta be on top of everything. Right. How how does how does protecting the music work right now obviously all these engineers want to make copies in case yeah. something's lost but then at the same time mm-hmm. you want stuff floating around in emails yeah lately we've like been that. lately since um lately the label kind of been for me like we've been in and out of like professional studios so right the professional studios are going to hard drive like and when we, it's a professional studio it, right it ain't, um, you got contracts people yeah, get it's, sued it's, if a it goes paper, wrong it's, a lot of, it's a lot of paperwork behind it and everything so we make sure everything is good. I don't really have to worry about that now. We don't even go to those type of studios. But as far as like music that's been recorded, try to put it in a vault. But sometimes stuff may get around. There's a couple of old songs that's floating around like right now, like bottom line. So I mean, people are gonna have a couple of old music, but we are gonna lock it down for the new stuff. Yeah, new that's stuff is new stuff. Is, deep in the vault. Yeah, deep in the vault. I, mean, I ain't even hear nothing. Y'all think if they think bottom line? Come on. Y'all really think bottom line is what it is? Not even it's, close. Come on, it's, come on, it's way too much heat. It's way too much heat. Bottom line, y'all can have that. We're going <laughs> we to we the video and all that. So, bottom line, y'all can have that. But when it's time, y'all don't know what the hood fake tape is going to do. So, we throw bottom line on the tape we want to. It don't matter. No. Let's do it. Right. If it's already working, yeah, right? Y'all let's have, roll yeah. right into it. Yeah. Yeah. When we threw it on the high line ballroom, it was, it was gone. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me about you. Kind of mentioned the labels, and so um, what? What's kind of the relationship with the, you know, suit and tie wearing people and navigating that? It's it's different for me because I'm not really a suit and tie type person, right? But it's different because when I honestly when I meet with them, they kind of understand where we're coming from. We young. We like we're different with a new wave so we tend to do things differently but i still show respect i still talk to them i still when we know how to present myself in the right way where it's a mutual understanding so Mm -hmm. just about how you present yourself at the end of the day and do you have like uh mentors in the game that you'd say kind of put you on the right path not enough not right now not enough a couple of minutes oh no the only mentor i got is rich come on Got you. Young CEO. It's all you need. Young boy. Yeah, he yeah. knows what he's doing. He's teaching us the way. He teaching us the way. Shout out to Rich, bro. He's really writing the rule book, too. Nah, he's... Because he's making calls. Yeah. But I think it's all about, you he know, he, he himself came up with, like, Migos, and he kind of sees yeah, he, how it happened. And nah, he, when I think of, like, um, Streets on Lock, right? It's mm-hmm. like Migos, and mm-hmm. then... It's Rich. Him. And so he took that, and now he wants to be at the front, and then be like, "All right, let's bring in Dex, let's bring in Jay Critch. Nah, and like I just think create for me, that magic just, for the new generation. Yeah, I just think this, I see this like the Rich Migos. I don't really know their relationship, but I know they're all brothers, just like yeah. how <clears throat> Tell Money Game would be. So they resemble us. Um, Rich is always going to be um, there their brother like I feel like that's their man which is always going to be regardless of whatever the level of however people may see it however the fans may may look it but that's what it is however the fans see it is how the fans see it we all always going to know what it is so I, that's how their relationship is in my opinion so I don't think anybody like feels like nah. I, I see that same oh, oh I see what you, you mean I, I get what you're saying yeah yeah no definitely everyone's mm-hmm. everyone's on an even footing and getting like the same look and in terms of just how pop and the artists are everyone seems to be coming to the same level yeah. kind of like a Nicki Minaj Drake yeah everybody gonna do it in their own way though everybody gonna do it in their own way right yeah Rich got his own route 
Critch gonna have his own route, and Dex gonna have his own route. But we all gonna be at the top. Yeah, talking about those three together, it's mm-hmm. it's a really interesting combination because I feel like not that they rap similar, but they complement each other mm-hmm. when they're rapping really mm-hmm. good. And mm-hmm. so, like a mixtape like Rich Forever Three seems really seamless that way. Yeah, because you hear everybody heard like the little snippets of like the trio of them on the track, and everybody was just like, it's different sounds. You got Critch who's coming with the bars, and then you got Dex who's like flowing with the beat, and then you got Rich who's just like on his CEO boss that is just linking it all together. Yeah, it's like straight out of oops. Yeah, it's like, yeah, straight up. Like, Adam <laughs> was like, yo, let's keep it going. That's how it is in the studio. It's like, Critch, do this hook. All right, Rich, boom. Rich going, then that's going. Critch going, like, it's a revolving door. They don't stop. They don't stop. They don't stop. No. Tell, me, tell me about um, the P&B Rock feature and yeah. how that came together. Is that like... Are you pushing that single hard? Is that going to get a video? What can you tell us about that? I want the video. You want it? Yeah, I do. We want it. Yeah, I do. I want the well, video. No. I think a lot of people want the video, though. Yeah. But PNB busy, too. Chris busy, too. Um, but we put that together. We're going to put that together. We're going to try to put that together. Oh, yeah. Shout out PNB Rock, Double XL Freshman. But yeah, that link up was crazy. That was a good link up for us. I mean, that was early too. That was a good link up. Oh, that was early. Yeah. So that song wasn't necessarily. Nah, that song. That was, song's bad. That song was in the vault for a while. In the chamber. Okay. Yeah, that song was in the vault for a while. Like we had that done for a while. It was just time. Mm. It was just time. Right. Like, for a lot of people, a lot of people was going crazy when I had it on my phone. So I knew it was time. We all knew it was time. Oh, okay. And that my video coming was gonna be crazy. My last question is about music marketing uh-huh. and the new rules of music marketing. Oh, yeah. What's up? Tell me about tell me about what you think are the new rules in terms of what what you guys are doing or what you see other people doing that's really effective for like the streaming age. Um, for us, I think we do a lot of like we we hold on to a lot of stuff and we analyze it, like and we analyze timing, vibe, and how like I guess society, Instagram, everything, how everything is going, like. We'll tease a couple videos, post it like teaser. We'll be on Snapchat, Instagram, Snap, and we look at our reviews, see what people are saying. Certain songs people go crazy for. So it's like that PNB rock. I always every time I like I play it on my Snap or something, I always got feedback mm. every time, every time. So I think we we do a lot of in depth touch with our fans. Like you look at the double XL and how the cover when they posted the cover, everybody's commenting where's Dex. Yeah. That's because like Yeah. That's because That's what I was saying. That's because Dex is so in touch with his fans. And so his fans understand how Dex would feel that he's not on that cover. And yeah, his fans so are gonna same, go right. That's the same him. thing was. You'll see even like even like fans of Critch messing with us, like Al, me, Justo, because we so in touch with him. I FaceTime a fan, I don't got no problem with that. I mean I'll take a we Chris take a thousand pictures at the end of the show. No problem. We go in malls, no problem, take pictures. Like, that's how you're supposed to be with your fans. Yeah, so I man, see what you're saying. The theme of like, yeah. you're removing the middleman. Yeah. So really, that, it yeah. really is so the now are, So now you know directly how your fans feel. So now you take that, you throw that into your marketing, you can't go wrong because you're giving them what they want at the end of the day. That's pretty cool. So the more you get in touch with your fans and understand what they're talking about and how they feel, you know, every time you drop something, it's going to be right. Even if you look at the negative comments, okay, cool. The negative, right. the negative comments can build. Yeah, the negative, the negative comments mean something too. I was, he dropped Drop Me Brazy. Some people was not like messing with the auto tune. But I I personally mess with it. I personally mess with Drop Me Brazy. Fire. A lot of people mess with it too. But it was a lot of kind of like, oh, I'm messing with auto tune. But it don't mean nothing. But I was just, I mean, that's just me seeing it. I see it. But it don't mean nothing. But we do it. Right. So just make it do. come with it better the next time. It's, it's always gonna be heat. It's always gonna be heat. I guarantee you, I'm saying people right now are probably like, oh, I ain't messed with that at first, but yeah, I do. Come around. Yeah. So, I think all new sounds have to have mm-hmm. that. And that's that time the new, come around. Comes into a new wave of marketing. Push, we pushing out new things that people don't never really hear it. They need to catch so up. They say that, that a lot about somebody's voice. Yeah, too. So when you hear when you hear it for the first time, of course you're gonna be like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if I keep playing it for you, and my energy is good, you feel my energy is good off the song, you're going to be like, ah, I can mess with it too. Okay. 
That's yeah. how it is though. That's how it is in the marketing. So overall, new rules, getting touch with your fans. Straight up like that. Point blank period. Point blank period. Dope. Well, yeah, that was my question. Thank you for coming by, bro. Yeah, yeah. Definitely promo all yeah, yeah. the shit going on. Just one three time. Now. You know that. Hope made a mistake coming out soon. Um, you know, Millsy, here's Top Money Game, 730 Game. You know that shit. Rich forever. Rich forever. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, man. So this is the Organized Sound Podcast. I'm your host, Mahib, signing out.